Hi, Ben here from Simply Spanish Wine, and today I'm going to talk about the red wine grape Tempranillo. Now, Tempranillo is one of the most popular grapes in Spain. After the white grape variety Airen, it is the second most planted grape in the whole of Spain. It covers around about 200,000 hectares, which is about a fifth of the total vineyards in Spain. The name Tempranillo comes from the Spanish word Temprano, which means early. Now that's because Tempranillo is an early ripening grape, uh, which has quite a short growing cycle. It's low in acidity and quite low in natural sugars. Now, the low acidity means that it's quite suited to cooler Atlantic-style climates, but the low natural sugars mean that it needs warm weather to get it to ripen properly and to boost that natural sugar content. Now, that means it's perfect for places like Rioja and Ribera del Duero and the climates that they have there. In those two regions, the, the summers have got a really good temperature differential. So you have really warm days, but you have nice cool evenings as well. So you have that difference in temperature. And that difference is actually even more notable and more extremes in the higher altitude parts of those two regions. So it's not surprising really that Tempranillo forms the mainstay of the wines that are made in those two denominaciones. Although it's worth noting that in Ribera del Duero, it's actually called Tinta del País. So you are unlikely to see the name, or you're less likely to see the name Tempranillo on the wine labels of wines made in Ribera del Duero. Tempranillo is also used in other parts of Spain as well, but again, it comes under different names. So for example, in the Penedes region of central Catalonia, you'll find Tempranillo being referred to as Ul del Liebre, and in central Spain, it goes by the name of Centibel. Now, because of the lower sugar levels and the earlier ripening, Tempranillo doesn't tend to produce wines that are particularly high in alcohol. That's quite a good thing, because on the one hand, it means it produces quite easy to drink wines, um, but it also means that the, the wines that it creates are relatively adaptable to a wide range of foods, so it drinks well with a lot of different types of food. Um, but it doesn't have a particularly distinct flavour or aroma profile either. Now, when you drink a Tempranillo wine, you will certainly find strawberries and red fruits. And you'll also note things like spice, leather, vanilla, certainly in the nose there. But a lot of that is down to the techniques and skills of the winemaker as much as it is down to the grape itself. So quite often, Tempranillo is mixed with other grapes, for example, Garnacha or Carignan, just to give it a little bit more character and a bit more of a flavor profile. Another way to enhance the profile of Tempranillo is to barrel age it. Now with quite a lot of grapes, uh, barrel aging isn't necessarily the best thing because if they're particularly delicate or they have particularly specific flavor profiles, then the wood can actually sometimes overpower the characteristics of the grape. And so it's not an ideal process for the grape to go through. But Tempranillo works really, really well with oak. It really reacts well with the, the oak and takes on the, the flavor characteristics. And the two of them combine to really enhance the wine and produce something very special. So you'll often find winemakers will use Tempranillo when they're producing a wine that's specifically designed for aging. Now in Rioja there's a particular focus on, on aging. In fact they actually have their own way of age classification for wines. So for example the standard way to classify a crianza in Spain is that the wine has to have been aged for 24 months of which at least six months need to have been spent in a barrel. Whereas in Rioja they require the wine to have spent at least 12 months in a barrel before it can be called crianza. Now, in reservas, the nationwide um, norms are similar across the whole country. So it's uh, 36 months of aging, of which 12 months need to have been spent in a barrel. But then when you get to Gran Reserva, the, there's a difference again. So the standard um, aging for, for Gran Reserva is five years of aging, of which at least 18 months need to have been spent in a barrel. But in Rioja, they demand at least two years in the barrel and three months of bottle aging before the wine can be released for sale. 
But anyway, that's enough about aging. Matthew's got a whole separate video on aging. If you're interested in that, you can pop over and watch that. The main thing to note is that Tempranillo is a really, really good grape to get you into Spanish wine. It's uh, an adaptable grape, so winemakers love working with it, but also it's uh, one of those grapes that comes in a whole variety of different styles, so it means that there's something out there for every drinking taste and every drinking style. So I hope that's given you a little bit more insight into Tempranillo and tempted you to go out and buy one if you haven't already. Uh, if you've liked this video, please give us a like, share your comments, share the video itself with your friends, and we will see you again soon on Simply Spanish Wine. Thanks for watching.